Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Can the state of California force a pro-life pregnancy counseling center to advertise for abortions from Planned Parenthood? Today we interview Brad Dacus of Pacific Justice Institute, and he has news from California. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On today's show, we have a live interview from California with our returning friend and an expert lawyer who defends religious freedom and especially the right to life of the unborn. Welcome to the program, Brad Dacus of Pacific Justice Institute. Yes, great to be on the show. Thank you, Dr. Chaps. So God bless you, Brad. It was great to see you in Colorado last week. And I know you are fighting the good fight on the left coast and you are actually in the middle of a case that is pending a decision before the United States Supreme Court. What are you asking for? And please explain that case. Oh yes, it's a very important case. Uh, the city of, oh, excuse me, the state of California uh, passed a law requiring all pro-life pregnancy clinics to have to have a large sign posted in their waiting room telling women where they can get a, a free or low cost abortion and the phone number to call. It has to be in at least 22 font size, so it's, it's a blatant ad right in the middle of their waiting room, something they're totally against. And this was pushed, of course, by Planned Parenthood. Uh, we at the Pacific Justice Institute uh, represented a number of clinics. Uh, we filed a lawsuit in federal court. Uh, unsuccessfully, we're, we weren't able to stop it. Then to the uh, federal district, uh, excuse me, the federal circuit court, the Ninth Circuit. Uh, once again, we were not able to stop it. And uh, now we have filed a petition for certiorari to the United States Supreme Court. It's interesting, Dr. Chas, because the Supreme Court has been holding off on deciding uh, on this for quite a while. We now expect them to come down with a decision within uh, two weeks as to whether or not they're going to take it up. There's conflicting case law on this, which means uh, other federal courts have decided differently in, uh, in other states and other parts of the country on, this, uh, on a very similar issue to this you know, with similar legislation. So we think there's a very good chance that the Supreme Court will see conflicting case law and, uh, and hopefully we'll take it up so we get this uh, outrageous uh, piece of legislation reversed and, uh, and remove these outrageous shackles uh, violating free speech rights, free exercise of religion, freedom of association that are uh, right now plaguing uh, every single pro-life uh, clinic ministry in the state of California. So Brad, I think there was a comparable case not re relating to the pro-life industry, but there was a t-shirt maker in I think either Kentucky or Tennessee, and the Supreme Court said the t-shirt maker does not have to print t-shirts with a message that they are fundamentally opposed to. Is it a First Amendment right in the Constitution to not be forced by the government to promote speech that you personally disagree with? Uh, yes, it is, and, that, and the case law uh, that's clearly established there uh, protects individuals and businesses from having to engage in uh, expression where that expression is uh, totally opposed to the sincerely held uh, religious beliefs uh, of that entity. And we're talking about uh, like uh, t-shirts where they had to uh, have custom, they were custom made with custom uh, design. And, and the courts and, and have recognized that it's just not fair, it's not right to force someone to use their, their individual artistic skills or creative skills, expressive skills uh, to promote a message that, which is different than what they agree with. Uh, here we have uh, a, a mandate that they have a large sign posted in a nonprofit ministry receiving no money from the government that is totally against who they are, what they believe, and what they stand for. So it's a very strong case, but it's also a very important case uh, because uh, if we're not successful in halting this, then it can easily be expanded in, into, uh, to apply to uh, different kinds of religious institutions in other capacities. 
So Brad, what is the Pacific Justice Institute? What is your mission and how do you guys hear about these cases? Yes, we're, we're a nonprofit 501c3 a legal ministry. Uh, we're sort of unique in that we work hard to make sure that everyone gets help, that no one's left on the side of the road when it comes to issues of faith, family, freedom. And uh, we have a huge network of attorneys all across the country. We do our work completely without charge. And we, we really focus on making sure of it, uh, that people get help. Uh, people hear about us uh, prom uh, prominently, uh, predominantly through uh, media, such as this kind of a program. Also, we have our, our own uh, radio show, The Dacus Report, on over 100 stations, and a commentary, The Legal Edge, on over 500 stations. So all across the country, they hear about us, they hear what we're doing, they contact us, and we really work hard to be faithful and make sure that everyone gets help, that no one's left on the side of the road. When it comes to these basic fundamental issues, uh, such as religious freedom, the sanctity of human life, the rights of parents, and, uh, and, and similar uh, civil liberties. So talk about parental rights for a moment. There seems to be a, a great attack, especially in California. The state legislature there continually tries to force parents to send their children to schools that are trying to re-educate them about, for example, gender identity. Our friend Karen England at Capital Resource Institute recently uh, exposed this book, and I don't know if you can talk about that. Oh yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely terrible what's taking place in California. And in one particular school district, a public charter school in Rockland, California, a kindergarten teacher, uh, without notice to parents or parental consent or opportunity to, uh, for parents to opt their child out of it, she took liberty to read a book called Jazz, J-A-Z-Z. -Z. And in this book, it has a, a transgender child uh, who goes to a doctor and is told that they need to change their gender. So that's what this transgender child does. And, and of course, uh, the students in the classroom were very confused. Uh, some of them were actually very upset. Uh, they, uh, some were, were crying at home, afraid that their parents might take them to the doctor and change their gender. And one girl that was crying said, Mommy, I don't want to be a boy. I want to, I want to stay being a girl. So it had a real impact on the kids. But it was a terrible, egregious violation of the rights of parents. Now, here's the, here's the really, really sad part of this. And that is the fact that uh, in California, uh, school districts more and more will be trying to do this. Now, we at Pacific Justice have challenged them, and we've uh, drafted model policies for them to adopt that are much more respectful for the rights of parents uh, and children. But in California, uh, we have the LA Unified School District, for example, and others adopting aggressive pro-transgender programs for kindergartners all the way through through public schools. They're already required to have uh, uh, positive role model icons uh, for both sexual orientation and uh, gender identity. Uh, transgenders in the, the textbooks, history, sociology textbooks, all grade levels. So what's happening in California, it's happening at a very fast clip. Many parents are not even aware of it. And unfortunately, there, there are many children who are going to be paying the price uh, because parents are not aware and because of this egregious breach of trust by public education in California. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to ask Brad Dacus about HIV and the new law that it's okay to share your blood. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I want to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God. But we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. 
Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80970. You can also call us toll-free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps, joined again via Skype from California by our returning guest and dear friend, Brad Dacus of Pacific Justice Institute. Brad, what is your website and how do people learn more? Yes, if they'd like to get more information, like receive our special legal insider newsletter that comes via email or uh, any of our cases, they can simply go to pacificjustice.org, that's pacificjustice.org, pacificjustice.org. Uh, people will find it really helpful, very eye-opening. Uh, they get all, there's all kinds of resources there. Uh, and they can also listen to podcasts of our, our, of our own uh, radio show as, as well if they'd like to. So Brad, recently I'm told the governor of California, I think it's still Jerry Brown, uh, yes. signed a letter that people who know that they ha are HIV positive, know that they have full-blown AIDS, can now uh, either donate blood or go out and have sex with people, and it's not a crime to infect somebody else with your disease. Is that possible? Yes, uh, unfortunately it is, it is possible. Uh, they can knowingly have HIV and yet in, engage in sexual activity without even uh, informing the other person of the risk element uh, or taking uh, you know, some kind of protective measures. And they can do this and the other person can get AIDS and die of it and there's no felony prosecution. There's no uh, murder, attempted murder uh, at all. Uh, it's, it's just reduced to a, a, a misdemeanor, even though we have someone's life on, on the line. And here's the... The real problem with this that I've noticed is that uh, the advocates of this are those are the extreme activists in the LGBT movement, LGBTQ movement, uh, thinking that this is a gay rights issue. And yet the irony is, is that this legislation is going to provide now less protection for those most vulnerable of getting AIDS uh, through this kind of sexual activity. So uh, the, it's, it's going to result in more gays getting infected with AIDS and more gays paying the price of it uh, in, in many different ways. People say, well, you know, with the cocktail drugs, uh, they're not as likely to, to die from it. Well, uh, it, even if they don't die from it, the ramifications are still tremendous. One is they're inhibited from uh, relationships. Uh, they're inhibited from, from becoming a parent uh, or a future grandparent. Uh, they're also saddled with a half a million, estimates are about a half a million in expenses for drugs uh, just to stay alive. Uh, much less also a, a, a definite reduction in their lifespan. So these are serious material, uh, material harm that's going to happen to people, uh, assuming that, that they don't die from AIDS also. So it's, uh, and there's other medical diseases and things that come about as a result of AIDS, even if they're able to uh, prevent it uh, from killing them. So it's, it's a serious uh, ramifications. And the irony is those who are uh, advocating it are those who are supposed to be the advocates uh, for uh, for the gays uh, in California, in reality, all they're doing is uh, making things worse in a very terrible, inhumane way. Well, although there may not be the same legal ramifications, I happen to believe, as a chaplain, the Bible in Romans chapter one is very clear that those who uh, knew right from wrong and yet they choose to do wrong, they receive in themselves the recompense of their own sinful choices. And in this case, it's not only the physical disease, but it is the spiritual disease that it rots away their soul and it costs them their very lives as they're infiltrated with the demons of lust who take over their mind. So right. you don't have to agree yeah. with that, but uh, Brad, I wanna oh. ask you, what is Governor Brown's explanation? If he's gonna sign this into law, or maybe he already did, how does he justify that to his own constituents? Well, you know, th this is the left, the extreme left are the ones who are advocating this. And that's 
you know, he's definitely to, on the left. Uh, although there's some legislators farther to the left, believe it or not, uh, than him in California. But uh, this is seen as a gay rights piece of legislation. And it's, it's really sad because if you really have love and compassion and respect for people uh, in the gay community, uh, you know, you don't want harm to them. Uh, you don't want death. You want them uh, to have life in, in the fullest way possible. You want them to be protected as much as possible from uh, diseases like this. So love and compassion and respect uh, for people in the gay community uh, should, should precipitate something quite the opposite of this. And that is what is so confusing uh, to someone who looks at this objectively as to its real impact on, on those that are going to be directly affected by uh, this, uh, this legislation. Well, I think you're right. You know, there was other news recently in California about marijuana legislation, and you have a breaking news update. You said there was a, a good news story that you have personal knowledge of. Oh, yes, uh, definitely. You know, the city of San Francisco, the planning commission there has approved uh, so many uh, what we call pot shops or uh, medical marijuana dispensaries uh, all over the city. And there's one community, one district, if you will, it's called the Sunset District, uh, where the people that, in that district, the parents and families, uh, got together and they said, wait a minute, we don't want one of those in our community. In fact, the site where they wanted to put one, this, these, this marijuana uh, business, it, it was located less than 600 feet from a Christian preschool as well as a church that has an active youth center, a Lutheran church. So uh, the parents and, and the, those institutions contacted us at Pacific Justice Institute. Uh, the Planning Commission voted five to one to approve it, even though it's close to these uh, institutions where children gather and youth gather. We at Pacific Justice uh, went to bat for those parents in that community. Uh, we appealed this before the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, and I will have to admit right up front, uh, I sincerely doubt they have the same worldview that I do. Uh, yet, nonetheless, we made it our, our, our case very clear uh, that we're talking about preschoolers and youth, and the intention of the legislation is to protect these young people. The Board of Supervisors voted nine to two to reverse the Planning Commission's decision and respect and listen to the parents of that community and not allow that marijuana pot shop to uh, be a part of that community and impact that community. It's a wonderful success and it should send a loud message, uh, Dr. Chap, how, how parents, no matter where they are, if they get involved and they contact uh, organizations like Pacific Justice Institute, uh, they can turn things around, even though things seem very, very stacked against them. Well, congratulations from that victory. Let's take another short break. When we come back, I'll ask Brad Dacus about other religious freedom victories he's seeing in California. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also face punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step -step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, this book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. In How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, Gordon Klingenschmidt equips you with 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional. His 15 inspiring true stories of political victory prove the effectiveness of these methods. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. 
by becoming the media, gathering petitions, building an army, and prayerfully fighting the right enemy, you can reverse bad laws and help establish the kingdom of God right now. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schooloflibertyorg Again, that's schooloflibertyorg That's schooloflibertyorg It's time to take back your country. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. One more segment with Brad Dacus. Brad, you are so busy and there are so many people clamoring for your services and so many legal cases that you were involved in. Talk a little bit more about uh, some of the recent activities of Pacific Justice. Oh, you bet. Something that happened very recently was in, was in Las Vegas uh, where a, a man was preaching, preaching the gospel, he loves the Lord, uh, he was boldly preaching the gospel. Of course, the gospel, you know, sin, salvation, forgiveness, repentance, and coming to Christ and eternal life, the full gospel message. And yet the police uh, charged him uh, with a crime because uh, there in, in Las Vegas, they have a, a, a policy, a local, local policy ordinance that says that uh, you can speak, you can preach, but you have to keep walking. Uh, I call it the soapbox, soapbox on wheels uh, mandate, uh, which is uh, very illogical if you really believe in free speech. So he was standing there, wasn't blocking traffic, wasn't blocking people passing by, and uh, he was criminally prosecuted. We at the Pacific Justice Institute stood up for him. Uh, we had a local affiliate attorney there in Nevada uh, who uh, helped us with this case, very important, Dave Williams, uh, along with one of our other attorneys, uh, Ray Hackey, uh, we appeared there in, in, in court to defend him uh, from criminal prosecution. And the good news is that the district attorney decided to drop the charges there on the first day of the trial. Uh, it's a wonderful success. But uh, this is the third street preacher we've had to defend uh, just within the last 18 months. So we're seeing an increase in, this, uh, aggressive, in these aggressive attempts to try to silence people preaching the gospel and yet we at Pacific Justice Institute are 3-0, and and we intend to, co to continue these efforts to defend the ability for people uh, the good old-fashioned way, which is to boldly preach uh, to a listening audience uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, as a chaplain who prayed in Jesus' name and preaches the gospel on national television, I'm with you, and I'm with that street preacher who is out there doing the hard work of evangelism in Sin City itself. Uh, any reaction to the recent tragedy in Las Vegas? Our hearts and prayers go to the families of those affected by the recent shooting. Yes, you know, one interesting thing about that is how uh, ministries uh, that I'm aware of uh, quickly stepped up to the plate uh, to reach out uh, to help the hurting families, to help those who are wounded, uh, to minister. And uh, I just have so much respect for all the work uh, that is uh, taking place. You know, I know uh, Pastor Greg Laurie, for example, uh, he has a wonderful outreach uh, crusade ministry. Uh, he has uh, dropped everything and, and, and reach, to reach out to uh, the needs of that community. Uh, the, the scars are deep. Uh, roughly half of those, by the way, who, who died uh, there in uh, Las Vegas were actually from Southern California. Uh, so it, those wounds and, and hurt and pain uh, permeate well beyond Las Vegas. And I think it's, uh, it's so important that, uh, that people of faith um, do, do everything they can in love to reach out to, to those who are in hurt and uh, from this terrible, terrible tragedy that uh, uh, just uh, took everyone by surprise. So Brad, I know you don't specialize in Second Amendment law, but you are a constitutional lawyer. And I wonder if the Second Amendment of the Constitution in your opinion, would protect uh, semi-automatic rifles or automatic rifles, or there's this hybrid device. The shooter, Stephen Paddock, reportedly had something called a bump stock, which made it easier for him to shoot very fast at people. Um, what do you think the, con the Second Amendment says in that regard? Well, the Second Amendment, the purpose of the Second Amendment uh, was not to protect uh, the ability for people to hunt. 
Uh, that's not, was not the, the purpose of it. Uh, the purpose of it was to protect and defend the ability for we the people uh, to take back our government if government becomes t uh, tyrannical. And the Founding Fathers, it was a big gamble, uh, the, the Constitution and, and this new government. And they had that in there as a safety measure in the worst case scenario that we the people uh, had to take it back our government should it become tyrannical and dicta uh, dict dictatorship or uh, a monarch or something like that. Uh, so to do that, to be able to do that, we don't have to have uh, those kinds of weapons. If, if the people are armed, uh, we can do that in, the, in that scenario of, a, of that kind of a tyranny. Uh, so uh, what we're talking about is something that is, is not ne necessary for as far as the, the Second Amendment is concerned. And in fact, that's why I, I applaud the National Rifle Association, the NRA, uh, for also coming out and saying, hey, uh, we're not contending that this is protected, uh, that these, these kinds of weapons uh, and this kinds of um, uh, modification for weapons is somehow protected. Uh, these can actually be very, very dangerous and go way uh, well beyond uh, the Second Amendment intention of uh, empowering people, though, to be able to uh, hold government united um, for... Uh, corruption or t takeover or coup or something like that. Uh, so I think that, uh, that we, we should be moving in the right direction for proper reform, but that reform has to always re respect though, the rights of people uh, to protect themselves. It's also important uh, just for a safe and civil society. Uh, you know, I actually feel more comfortable, believe it or not, if I'm in a, in a restaurant or I'm in a church, and I know there's several people with concealed weapons, uh, it just gives actual greater protection uh, for the people uh, than a, a law that makes it so people can't be armed and not have any way of protecting themselves against individuals like we saw in Las Vegas. You are always so articulate, but we honestly are out of time. I wonder if you would join me in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we ask your blessing on the people of Las Vegas. We ask your blessing on Brad Dacus and the Pacific Justice Institute. Continue to give us not just religious liberty, but the right to life and the protections of our creator, uh, that God, you made us with certain inalienable rights. And Brad Dacus, we are proud of you for fighting for those rights in Jesus' name, amen. Our website is PrayInJesusName.org. If you need prayer, call us today at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Today I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.